Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we meet the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. Crimson Valve just dropped, and you know we just had to get some games in with these new commanders. First is Chandler on Grawnok, the Omnivore. When our little frog friend here got spoiled, Chandler was amped for this amphibian, deciding to build this deck around Frog Tribal and grinding value from its commander's mill and play from exile abilities. He starts the game with the Forest, Temple of Mystery, Castle Vantress, Croaking Counterpart, Heroic Intervention, Rapid Hybridization, and an Arcane Signet. Next up is Ethan on Audric, Blood Cursed. To be honest, everyone in the group rated this car super low when it was spoiled, but Ethan was determined to prove them all wrong. This deck is focused around creating blood tokens with Audric's Enter the Battlefield ability and then using those tokens in various ways to accrue value. His starting hand has a Rugged Prairie, Secluded Step, Arcane Signet, Boros Charm, Osgear the Reconstructor, Iroas God of Victory, and Teleportation Circle. Third is Matt on Olivia, Crimson Bride. He was really excited to build this commander, making this deck focus around reanimating powerful creatures through Olivia's ability and creating a massive and powerful board. He keeps a hand of two mountains, Command Beacon, Ragavan Nimble Pilferer, Megas of the Wheel, Grey Mushroom of Asphodel, and Lithoform Engine. Our fourth player today is Cody on Toxroll, the Corrosive. This is a Demir control deck that uses its interaction to stall out the game until it can land a bomb of a commander to turn it into a slugfest. His opening hand is a Swamp, Watery Grave, Verdant Catacombs, Mystic Remora, Fluster Storm, Spellskite, and Salty Equation. I hope you're excited to see these new commanders in action, but before we roll the gameplay, go ahead and leave us a comment on who you hope will take home the victory. While you're down there, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe so you don't miss our weekly uploads. Now, on to the game. Welcome everybody to this riveting gameplay. Chandler starts his turn off with the Temple of Mystery, scries one to the top, and passes to Ethan. Ethan plays his Secluded Step and passes to Matt. Matt plays his Mountain into a turn one Ragavan, a much better turn one than Chandler and Ethan. Cody plays Island into a Mystic Remora, also a really good turn one play. Chandler will play Tropical Island, then tap for two to cast Arcane Signet. He'll then tap his Arcane Signet to cast Incubation, who reveal a Spore Frog, and Cody will draw two cards to his Mystic Remora. The turn will then be passed to Ethan, who plays a Rugged Prairie, into his own Arcane Signet. Cody will draw another card, and Ethan will pass. Matt will play a Snow-Covered Swamp as land for turn, and then move to combat, swinging two at Cody. When it connects, Cody reveals a Maskwood Nexus, and Matt makes a Treasure Token. After this, Matt will cast a Magus of the Wheel, and then pass the turn to Cody. Cody decides to pay for his Mystic Remora on his upkeep. He'll then play a Verdant Catacombs as land for turn, and then move to his end step. He has to discard two cards, and he discards two lands. Now on Chandler's turn, he starts off with his Castle Vantress. He'll then cast Rampant Growth to find a tapped island to the battlefield, and Cody will draw a card off this. Chandler will then cast his Spore Frog, and then pass the turn to Ethan. Ethan will play a Mountain, tap for four, and cast his Teleportation Circle. After this, he'll move to his end step, blink his Arcane Signet, and then pass the turn to Matt. Matt will start off with his second Mountain. He'll then tap for two and cast Talisman of Indulgence, then move to combat. He decides to swing Ragavan at Ethan, and Ethan will exile Reckless Fireweaver off the top of his library. Matt will gladly cast this, and he'll take one off tapping his Talisman for red. He'll then pass the turn to Cody, and Cody will fetch on his end step. He'll find a swamp to the battlefield. Now on his upkeep, Cody decides to just let the fish die. He has drawn plenty of cards off of it. He'll then shock in his Watery Grave, tap for two black mana, and cast Dothy Voidwalker. This essentially shuts down both Chandler and Matt's commander's game plan. So when Cody passes, Chandler stops him on his end step and tries to rapid hybridization the Voidwalker, but Cody's got his Flusterstorm and casts it. Rapid Hybrid is countered and it's exiled with a Void counter. The turn is now Chandler's, who starts off with a Forest. And with not much to do, he just passes the turn to Ethan. And Ethan will start off with a Stone Coil Serpent, X is 1. Ethan will then tap for 3 and cast Audric. Stone Coil Serpent has two keywords, so he'll make two blood tokens. Ethan will then move to his end step, and blink Audric with Teleportation Circle, making two more blood tokens. The turn is then Matt's. Matt plays Command Beacon as land for turn, then moves straight to combat. He'll swing Ragavan at Chandler. But before damage, Chandler will activate Castle Vantress to scry two. He'll change the order of the two cards on top, and then take the two damage. He'll exile an island off the top of his library, and Matt will make a treasure token. And when the treasure enters, the Fire Weaver will do one damage to each of Matt's opponents. He'll then just pass the turn to Cody. And Cody will play an island as land for turn. 
He'll then ask the table who has the most cards in hand, and it turns out to be Ethan. So Cody will tap for one and cast Gitaxian Probe, targeting Ethan. After seeing no relevant threats in Ethan's hand, Cody decides to turn his attention to Matt. He sacrifices his Voidwalker to cast Chandler's Rapid Hybrid. He targets Matt's Bragavan with it. Matt will create a 3-3, and Cody then casts a Spell Skite. After this, he passes to Chandler. Now on his turn, Chandler finally decides to cast his commander, Grawlnock the Omnivore. He'll then move to combat and swing for one at Cody. He'll mill Command Tower, Ren and Seven, and Orin Frostfang. These will be exiled with Croak Counters. He'll then play the Command Tower from Exile. The turn is then passed to Ethan, and Ethan will start off by casting Basilisk Caller, and he'll attach it to his Stone Coil Serpent. He'll then move to combat and swing for one at Chandler. After this, he moves to his end step and blinks Audric again. Because of Vasilis Caller, he'll make four more blood tokens. Matt will also stop Ethan on Zen Step, pay two mana, and sacrifice Magus of the Wheel. Cody decides to respond by casting a Mystical Tutor. He puts a Grim Tutor to the top of his library, and Chandler also has a response to the Wheel. He decides to Nature's Claim Cody's Spell Skite. The Wheel resolves, and Chandler discards Heroic Intervention, Adaptive Automaton, and Croaking Counterpart. Ethan discards Swords to Plowshares, Trash for Treasure, Boros Charm, Iroas, and Ozgear. Matt discards his Grey Merchant, Valky God of Lies, Lithoform Engine, and Incarnation Technique. Cody discards Temple of the False God, Reality Shift, Solve the Equation, and Fierce Guardianship. Everyone then draws a fresh 7. That was all on Ethan's end step, so the turn is now Matt's. And he'll start off with a City of Brass. After this, he'll cast a Chrome Mox, imprinting Living Death, and Fire Weaver will deal a damage to his opponents. He'll cast a Carrion Feeder after this though, and then cast his commander, Olivia Crimson Bride. He'll then move to combat and swing Olivia at Chandler, and he'll put Valky in, attacking Cody. Ethan decides to respond by sacrificing one of his blood tokens to discard Bronze Guardian and draw a card. After everyone reveals their hands, Matt will take Ethan's Ornithopter of Paradise, Chandler's Realm Walker, and Cody didn't have a card in hand. Damage will then go through, and Matt will pass the turn to Cody. And Cody will start off with an Exotic Orchard. Cody will tap for 3 mana and cast his Grim Tutor. He leaves 2 blue mana open, so the table is guessing it's some sort of counterspell. The turn will then be passed to Chandler, and Chandler will start off with a Sylvan Library. He'll then cast a Steely Resolve, and when it resolves, he'll name Frog. After this, he'll move to combat and swing for 3 at Ethan and 1 at Cody. The attack triggers will mill Exploration, Sakura Tribuilder, Frog Hemoth, Plaxcaster Frog, a Forest, and a Simic Signet. A 6 for 6. These are all put into exile with Croak counters on them. Cody will then take 1 damage, and Ethan decides to not block. Now in his second main phase, Chandler will cast Exploration. He then plays his Forest from Exile, taps for two, and casts his Simic Signet. He'll then play a War Room as a second land for turn, and then cast a Sakura Tribuilder. And finally, he'll tap his last mana source to cast a Moth Dust Changeling. And the turn will be passed to Ethan after this, who will start it off with an Inspiring Statuary. He'll then play a Forgotten Cave as land for turn, and then move to his end step and blink Audric, making four more blood tokens. And Matt will start his turn off with an Ancient Tomb as land for turn. He'll then tap for 4 mana and cast Fervent Mastery, choosing Ethan as his opponent. Ethan will discard 4 cards and then draw that many. Matt will search his library for 3 cards, put them to his hand, and randomly discard 3. He discards Vindictive Lich, Runescar Demon, and a Dockside Extortionist. He'll then tap for 5 mana and cast a Terror of the Peaks. Cody is not a fan of this, so he casts the mana drain he tutored for. After this, Matt will move straight to combat and swing Olivia Chandler again. He decides to return Dockside Extortionist to the battlefield tapped and attacking Ethan. When it enters, he will make a ton of treasure tokens. Ethan will sacrifice one of his blood tokens to get Matt one less treasure, and Matt should be making 20 tokens here, but the table miscounts to 18. And when those 18 tokens enter the battlefield, Reckless Fireweaver will do 18 damage to each of Matt's opponents. And Chandler has to take an extra 3 to Olivia, and Ethan decides to blockside the Dockside. But Matt will just sack it to the Carrion Feeder before damage. And now with all this extra mana, Matt enters his second main phase and casts Massacre Worm. Chandler decides to respond by sacrificing his Sakura Tribuilder. He'll find a tapped island to the battlefield. He'll also sacrifice his Spore Frog to dodge the life loss from the Worm. The Worm will then resolve, and Ethan and Chandler both have a creature die and lose two life. The turn is then passed to Cody. Cody will get five colorless mana from the Mana Drain, and then play a Snow Swamp as land for turn. He'll then cast a Ponder, look at the top three, Shuffle his library, and draw a card. After this, he'll cast a pair of Lightning Greaves, and then his commander, Toxroll. He'll then equip the Greaves, and then move to his end step, and Toxroll will trigger. Matt will respond by sacrificing Valky to Carrion Feeder. The ability will then resolve, each creature will get a slime counter, and then the turn will be passed to Chandler. Sylvan Library will trigger, Chandler will choose a card, and put two back. 
He'll then play a forest and an alchemist refuge as land for turn. Chandler then, wanting to deal with Matt's board somehow, decides to cast Croaking Counterpart on Matt's Massacre Worm. To ensure Ethan loses 4 life here, Matt decides to not sacrifice his Massacre Worm in response. He will sacrifice Ethan's Fire Weaver though. Cody will make a slug from this, and then Croaking Counterpart's token will resolve. Ethan's Audric will die, Matt's 3-3 will die, and Cody's first slug will die. Ethan and Cody will both lose 4 life from this, and Matt too. And Cody gets 2 more slugs. Chandler will then tap for 5, and cast a Frog Hemoth. He'll then move to combat and swing it at Matt. Matt decides to not block it with his Massacre Worm because Chandler will just exile it with the combat damage trigger. And he's planning on reanimating it and killing Cody with it next turn. When it attacks, he'll mill Aronid Swarm Snapper, Oracle of Moldiah, and a Beast Within. And when the Frog Hemoth connects, Chandler will exile Dockside Extortionist, Terror of the Peaks, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, and Runescarred Demon. And Frog Hemoth will get 4 1 1 counters. Chandler will then tap for 3 and cast his Realm Walker. Which, funnily enough, is a slug. Chandler then proclaims him and Cody slug friends. He'll then move to his end step, and Tox Roll will trigger. Chandler's minus two minus two does not end at end step, so Matt will sacrifice Olivia to Carrion Feeder. When he does, he'll lose two life, and Cody will make a slug. Tox Roll's ability will then resolve, and Chandler's Massacre Frog will die, and Cody will make yet another slug. Chandler will also lose another two life. The turn will then be passed to Ethan, who starts off by casting a Surly Badger Sword by improvising it. He'll then follow it up by improvising a Duretti. He'll then downtick Duretti to sacrifice a tapped blood token to get back his Alhammerit's Archive. He'll then sacrifice a blood token to discard a mountain and draw two cards. Surly Badger Sword will make a treasure token. He'll then repeat the same process, this time discarding a Plains. And you better bet he'll do it again, this time discarding an Ornithopter of Paradise to get his Badger Sword a 1 1 counter. Ethan will then cast a 2 mana Vanquish the Horde. And Cody, not wanting to die to Massacre Worm triggers, gladly counterspells it. And honestly, I cannot blame him for that. Ethan will then move to his end step, Toxtra will trigger, and Ethan will blink his Arcane Signet. Grolnok will die upon getting its third slime counter, but he forgets to take it off the battlefield, but don't worry, he'll realize it soon. Matt will also sacrifice his Massacre Worm on end step to get his Carrion Feeder another counter. Now in his turn, Matt will cast a Gamble. When he randomly discards, he has to discard his Port Razor. He'll then sacrifice his Command Beacon to put Olivia to his hand, and then cast her with six of his treasures. He'll then move to combat and swing Olivia at Cody. He'll bring back Massacre Worm with this. And he'll have it tapped in attacking Ethan. When the Massacre Worm enters, all of Cody's slugs will die, and unfortunately with no other responses, Olivia kills him. And also before damage, Ethan will improvise out a Flawless Maneuver, and then block with his Surly Badger Sword. This is also where Chandler realizes Grawlnock should not be on the battlefield. And after this quite eventful turn, Matt will pass. Sylvan Library will trigger, and Chandler will not pay any life. He'll then start his main phase off with the Tangle Pool Bridge. He'll then move to combat and swing for 8 at Matt. Matt does not block, and Chandler will exile 5 creature cards and 3 non-creature cards from his library. This will get Frog Hemoth 5 more counters, and Chandler will gain 3 life. He'll then cast a Steeple Creeper off the top of his library, and then just pass the turn to Ethan. Ethan will start off by upticking Duretti to discard 2 cards and draw 4. One of these cards is Kozilek Butcher of Truth, so he'll shuffle his graveyard back into his library. The other was a land card, so he'll get a treasure token, and Surly Badger Sword will get a counter. He'll then play a command tower as land for turn. Then, free cast Rograk. He'll then sack a blood token to discard a mountain to draw two cards and create a treasure token. He'll then do it again, discarding a goblin welder and putting a counter on his creature. He'll then do this three more times, discarding a Cold Dolth of Forge Master, a Plains, and an Acroma's Memorial. When he discards the Memorial, he'll have his Badger Sword fight Matt's Massacre Worm. He'll then do it one more time, discarding a planes. After this, he'll improvise out an Acroma's Will, choosing to give lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors. And with exactly six creatures on the battlefield, Ethan will recast a two-mana Vanquish the Horde. With no creatures left but his Badger Sword, Ethan will swing for seven lifelink at Matt. And when it connects, Ethan will gain 14 thanks to All Hammer's Archive. He'll then move to his end step and discard a multitude of artifact cards plus an anger, which will give his surly badger Sor another counter. He'll also blink his arcane signet again. The turn is then Matt's. Matt decides to just recast his Olivia and then move to combat. Matt mutters something about being able to kill Chandler this turn, and Chandler boasts that there is no way he could do it. Matt moves to combat and swings Olivia at Chandler, and returns Massacre Worm also swinging at Chandler. Perhaps this was a bad move on Chandler's part. Chandler waits for Massacre Worm's trigger to resolve, and then flashes in a Haze Frog. All combat damage is prevented, and Chandler survives another turn. Matt will then cast a Morog, taking one to a City of Brass, as a blocker. He'll then pass the turn to Chandler, who scries two to the bottom with Castle Vantress on his instep. 
Now in his turn, Sylvan Library will trigger, and he will not pay any life. He'll then recast Grawlnock, move to combat, swing for two at Doretti, and mill turn to Frog, Fierce Guardianship, and Universal Automaton. Only the Automaton will be exiled with a Croak Counter. He'll then pass the turn to Ethan, probably hoping to do something cool with his Alchemist Refuge on Matt's end step. Now on Ethan's turn, he starts by upticking Doretti to discard a Conjurer's Closet and a Crystalline Giant. He'll draw four cards, put a counter on Badgersaur, and fight Matt's Massacre War. He'll then improvise a Trash for Treasure, sacrificing his last blood token to bring back a Chroma's Memorial. He'll then cast a Grim Monolith, and then a KCI, which worries the table. He then improvises out Audric, which gets him 5 blood tokens. He will then cast an Eldrazi Displacer. With Eldrazi Displacer, Cart Clan Ironworks, and Audric out, Ethan now has a loop where he can sacrifice 2 blood tokens to make 4 colorless mana. He'll activate Eldrazi Displacer to blink Audric, making 5 more blood tokens and having 1 leftover mana. He can then sacrifice as many blood tokens as he wants to discard a card and draw 2. He'll then go until he finds his Reckless Fireweaver again, then discard a land to make a treasure token, cast it, and then make enough blood tokens to kill everybody. Unfortunately, neither Matt or Chandler have any responses to this, so they concede the game, and today, Ethan and Audric are the Crimson Vow winners. You gotta love an underdog story. Congrats, Ethan. Hey guys, welcome to the end of the video. I apologize for getting sick halfway through, hopefully you couldn't tell, but because of that, I'm gonna keep this outro quick for you. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, and if you want to check out the deck list, they'll be in the description along with our social media links. As always, you guys, have a smooth day.